my favorite thing, I used to watch it on repeat with my mom, she's here, she'll tell you, um, was Sound of Music. I was Woo! obsessed. Um, Thank you. But then I realized as I got older, I was like, oh, people that look like me don't do shows about Nazis. Oh. <laughs> um, so, since I'm never going to get to do Sound of Music, I'm going to sing a song from it for you. Um, but I'm going to make it my own. Rogers with heart. It doesn't matter, it's all just white art. They look white painters, but painted in creams. Their shows are less unattainable dreams. <laughs> Meredith Wilson and dear Jerry Herman. Generally anything first sung by
in the last couple of years, there have been all sorts of roles Latinx performers in particular are not playing. On stage, just a couple weeks ago, we discovered they're not playing Evita and Peron. And before that, they weren't playing Evita, Che, Peron, and Magali. They weren't playing Usnavi. And they weren't playing Usnavi. And on screen, they're not playing Colombian drug lord Griselda Blanco because Welsh actor Catherine Zeta-Jones desperately needed the work. Again. <laughs> But if whitewashed roles are what Latina actors aren't playing, what are the roles they are playing? Tonight at Cast and Lose Live, we will find out everything the entertainment industry has to say about the Latinx community through the lens of the casting breakdown. For anyone not in the industry, a breakdown is a distilled blurb of text used to describe a character and the kind of performer a producing team is looking for. A breakdown is a job listing. A breakdown is also what you might want to have at some point during this show. <laughs> if this is your first time at Casting Lose Live, what you are about to hear from the talented people behind me in the first half of the show are real verbatim casting notices that were released to the professional world. It is vitally important that you remember that fact even when it becomes impossible. <laughs> for those of you returning to Cast and Loose Live, you already know what you're in for and you have no one to blame but yourselves. <laughs> and for those of you who saw the first iteration of tonight's show at the New Ohio Theater, you still have to laugh at my jokes even though you already know the punchlines. But also get ready for some new material sprinkled in throughout the evening's collection. In the second half of tonight's show, the cast will perform pieces written in response to these breakdowns by an incredible roster of writers from the Latinx theater community, many of whom are here tonight. <laughs> these writers were given a document of all the breakdowns you are about to hear and asked to write anything that inspired them in response. The results are funny, heartbreaking, creative, and poignant. But before we get to all that, Let's meet the attractive folks behind me. You might know Lauren Villegas. Please join me here. You might know Lauren from Spamilton or from making waves with her advocacy initiative project, Am I Right? You might not know her from donning full kabuki makeup and playing Yum Yum in the Mikado. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. You might know Alex J. Moreno. or Full Frontal with Samantha Bee, one of my favorite shows on television. You might not know him from his high school production of Rapunzel Uncut, <laughs> for which he auditioned for Rapunzel, but was cast as the town idiot. <laughs> you might know Annie Hank. You might know Annie's fans, apparently. You might know Annie Hank from the movie That's What She Said. You might not know her from the reality TV dating show I'll Take Two, that's A-I-S-L-E. I needed the money. Which she, <laughs> which she was tricked into auditioning for, but thankfully never aired. Yes. You might know Jorge Chacon. <laughs> from the public theater mobile Shakespeare unit production of Romeo and Juliet. You might not know him from the Sears Craftsman Christmas commercial, where he said his iconic line upon receiving his pair of wrenches, Mama, thank you. <laughs> Tony Award winning. You might know Sabrina Guevara. From Gotham or The Get Down, you might not know her from playing the only brown cartoon character in the International Rugrats Tour Live that ultimately traveled only to Virginia and Branson, Missouri. Branson was fun. You said Branson was surprisingly great. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, go smear an outfit. <laughs> And you might know Gilbert Cruz. <laughs> From the Sex and the City movie, you might not know him as a non-union extra in a 1980 trauma film in which he played a football player. The company could not, unfortunately, afford jerseys, so they painted the numbers onto the players' backs on a hot summer day, after which Gilbert had the 
the number 34 emblazoned in his skin in sunburn relief. <laughs> Until just now. <laughs> now, what do you get to play when you're Latinx? Well, there are all sorts of jobs you could pretend to have. Female dressing room attendant. 20s, 30s, a heavily mascaraed, overworked, impatient Hispanic who takes pride in her appearance, but who does have compassion, even if she keeps it tucked away at work. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Rosa. 45 to 60 years old, Hispanic female. Big hair, strong personality, can be overweight. Strong comedic talent, dramatic, has attitude. Rosa is the cleaning lady at the office. She oh. likes to listen Latino music while she cleans. <laughs> she has very little patience with her coworkers and likes to be left alone. Oh. Jesus? <laughs> Rodriguez. This is a professional Hispanic man who works in a high-tech firm. If ethnicity is secondary to his white-collar professional nature. <laughs> No thick accents or stereotypes for this role. <laughs> I'm not completely sure what it means, but I definitely know I should be offended. <laughs> Sometimes roles are not only for you, they're also about you. Is it true that Latinas are better kissers? <laughs> Internet project, non-union comedy experiment where one male host and one female host blindly kiss contestant guests. Must be comfortable kissing on camera. This project's so messed up, it blew the closed parentheses straight off the screen. <laughs> Sometimes a project will be about you, even if you're not in it. Elizabeth Carlyle. She's a well-versed historian and translator with a tremendous depth of knowledge in Latin American culture that is only matched by her stunning beauty, or stunning looks. Must be comfortable with tongue kissing, being on top or under male talent, and grinding in a manner that indicates sex. <laughs> Full body nudity will not be exposed on camera. Only submit if you are comfortable with this. But be prepared, many content makers seem to be confused by what actually constitutes being Latinx. Boss two, male, dark Caucasian, or Latino look, ethnically vague. Dad, ethnically ambiguous. Caucasian with dark features or slightly Hispanic. <laughs> On a scale from one to Hispanic, where do they fall? <laughs> Daughter. Slightly ethnically ambiguous would be good. Latina slash, or at least brown hair. <laughs> Cultural heritage, am I right? I just, I wrote audience groans in the script. So, <laughs> so you did it. <laughs> Caucasian-ish woman, Lululemon type. Caucasian-ish, with some ethnically ambiguous thrown in. Clients are interested in seeing mostly Caucasian with some on-point Hispanic, Middle Eastern, and ambiguous women thrown in. Sure to keep your Hispanic on point, ladies. But the good news is, Latinx isn't just an ethnicity, it's a state of being. Role. Leslie Latina. <laughs> or white with Latina affectations. <laughs> Curvaceous and not at all athletic. Whoa. Bountiful posterior <laughs> doesn't hurt. Dancers, male and female, Hispanic, African American, mixed, Caucasian. Please dress the role and try to appear as if you are in an authentic Cuban show. Hair and makeup should look Latin. <laughs> Shaving man. Oh, sorry. No, I was just gonna say, you're already my favorite audience member. Right? The vocal reactions are living my life right now. Shaving man. Hispanic. Someone with a sun scruff that they would be willing to shave. Talent should have dark features and can reflect full range of Latino animals. Brazilian, Dominican, Afro Latino, and so forth. Great if talent has an interesting eye color. Every single identity. The whole industry is trying to understand what is it that you want? 
client is trying to appeal to the Hispanic community. Therefore, talent must be Hispanic, European, <laughs> or multi-ethnic, etc., or Caucasian, <laughs> with olive skin tones, or Caucasian that can also play multi-ethnic. <laughs> Obsessed with your sexual power. Gustavo Garcia. <laughs> Hispanic. Hot, cocky new boss. Think Alec Baldwin in 30 Rock meets Enrique Iglesias. Total womanizing bro. Antonio. Hispanic. Mediterranean. North American Indian. West Indies. Caribbean male. And some sex. <laughs> Latin call girl, the classic Latin woman, extremely sensual, voluptuous body with full busted bottom, looks around 20 years old, not looking for a perfect pretty face, black or brown hair with brown skin. Even if you don't fall into strict gender binary, your allure will still be the key to your success. Amber, Hispanic female, masculine and hot, nose piercing and tattoos, no, no, nonsense, <laughs> attitude. <laughs> Queen, male, Caucasian or Latino, a transvestite that oozes sexual confidence with masculine feline features <laughs> like a large predatory cat. <laughs> She's cold, malevolent, and supernatural. That said, there are different challenges facing the Latino community and the Latino community, respectively. We'll start with the ladies first. For some roles, you'll find yourself competing with other ethnicities, but they are top-notch opportunities. Two blue girls, <laughs> Caucasian, Hispanic, ethnically ambiguous, slutty, doing excessive lines cocaine in the bathroom with music manager to a rock band, becomes inquisitive at prospect of earning cash dancing for a rock band. Topless nudity. <laughs> Just me. Black, Latina, Middle Eastern, 40 to 50s, thick, curvy lady. You can tell she was a dime back in the day. I still pretty hot even now. Quiet and deliberate, but can be sassy when provoked. Not submissive, but when her man says, go. Beautiful girl skin tight dress heels. <laughs> Casting from pictures. <laughs> Asian, Caucasian, Eastern European, Hispanic, Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, mixed female. With a skin tight dress and heels. <laughs> Do you think people call her BGSTDH for sure? <laughs> One role that comes up often for Latinas is mom. A mother and her baby. Hispanic, Caribbean, or something. <laughs> Working class, but healthy. Whatever we can get, ideally the above. <laughs> I thought they were being dismissive or anything. Hispanic mom, a warm, friendly Hispanic woman with children, older and wiser, but not full on abuela. <laughs> Alice, Latina. She's able to look motherly, not stressed, compassionate, and slightly exhausted. <laughs> Mother, who clearly cares for her family, but the worry that she feels for them has become visible by slight wrinkles or a sad expression in her eyes when she smiles. <laughs> Lorena, Hispanic female, 30 to 40, an attractive Dominican young mother of a 18-year-old teenager <laughs> with a real accent. Real. Let's do some math, shall we? <laughs> it happens. It happens. <laughs> Rosa. Again, there's another Rosa. <laughs> Hispanic female. Rosa is short and spicy. Her motives to her coworkers and friends are shady. Rosa only has a heart for her family. Ah, but that word spicy, that brings up another issue. Make sure as a Latina you are prepared to bring the heat. Alexa Lopez, Latina only. Must look in Act 25 a fiery filmmaker who fancies herself Mexico's answer to Michael Moore. <laughs> Crystal, Ronette, and 
chiffon. <laughs> 20s, 30s. Hopefully a fiery, streetwise Latina. <laughs> Grassy ella. <laughs> A Hispanic female, a 24 ish Barracuda second year law student at USC, a telenovela S beauty, she arrives all Latina firebrand, a fish out of water in a pencil skirt. Elena, Hispanic, gorgeous, overbearing, controlling, overprotective, explosive temper. Elena is just your typical firecracker Latina with a big heart. That's typical. When you're not fiery, you can be feisty. Yvette, street smart Latina, feisty, passionate, sexy, tough enough to stand her ground but, and fight, but vulnerable enough to wound easily. <laughs> She's desperate for another life, the life she should have had. <laughs> we all feel it. And when you're not feisty, you're sassy. Brenda, Hispanic or African-American, the sassy, no-nonsense waitress at the diner who is also the lead's best friend. Uh, of course she is. Hot Latina bar regular. Hispanic or ethnic. Voluptuous, sassy, salty, comedic. She's attractive, shapely, and well-endowed or large breast. Just one. <laughs> Isabel, Hispanic female. Isabel is one of the beauticians in the beauty salon. She is a big gossip, incredibly sassy, and dripping with Latin flavor. Are these women or food items? Hot tamale. <laughs> Sexy Latina type, sassy, flirty, and bold video girl dancer slash gold digging girlfriend. With dreams of rapping. <laughs> with curves and comfortable with sexy dancing. Dominican hairstylist. Dominican female. A sassy and confident hairstylist, except for when it comes to working with Wendy's bad black hair. Oh. Yes. 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 Right, right. Yes. But as I think you've already you seen... Yeah. That's okay, no, no, please. <laughs> As I think you've already seen, if there's one thing more important than your vocabulary, it's your body. Chila. This is Chila. <laughs> A beautiful, if seemingly dim-witted, Puerto Rican brick house. <laughs> Harlem girl. African American, mixed ethnicity, Puerto Rican Latina girl. Typical Harlem girl. Attractive all the hood guys want them. Great look and personality, hot and sexy. Millie, 22, 24, Hispanic, mixed ethnicity, brunette bombshell, hardcore Latin girl. Drives a motorcycle with a sidecar. Because <laughs> if there's one thing that says hardcore, it's a sidecar. <laughs> they want, but a specific part of your body. Gabriela, beautiful, <laughs> sexy, busty. She's referred to as busty Gabriela. <laughs> Spanish accent, a plus. <laughs> Little Rosie. The pretty Puerto Rican Chichi Mama has a propensity for, le for leopard print dresses. Her bodacious bosom and vivacious spirit make her a fortune. I see James Joyce has been writing breakdowns again. <laughs> There is sex. Sexy Latina MILF M must be comfortable in lingerie. Audition will be improv. <laughs> and where there is sex, there is sexual assault. Leticia, 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 Leticia. <laughs> Hispanic female, Mexican immigrant hoping to build a new life in America. Innocent and trusting, but soulful. Strong emotional range. One suggestive rape scene. No nudity, only shoulders and above. 
Aren't you glad you went and got that MFA? <laughs> well, before we discover what it's like to be a Latino man, I want to hear a bit from my cast about their experiences in the industry. So, Lauren, you're not supposed to be here tonight. When we programmed this show, you were going to be in Man of La Mancha. What yeah. happened? It's a really funny story. Uh, I was on contract for a production of Man of La Mancha that was supposed to close last night, and it did, without me. Um, it was a really great process from the start. Um, <laughs> It was an all-white creative team, cool. Um, and they decided we were gonna set it in 1960s Spain. It was gonna be a Francoist secret police prison instead of an Inquisition prison, which is yeah, not a bad idea, cool. Hired a flamenco band from Spain to come reorchestrate the whole show. So like, they're from Spain. Do you think they speak English? Do you think anyone behind the table speaks Spanish? Do you think we hired a translator? <laughs> I made it to tech. <laughs> now I'm back. Ah, so had they asked you to do translations? Yeah, and I told them literally my Spanish is not good enough. Like, well, but also, are they going to pay you to be the translator? Ta-da! Like it was a nightmare from the start. Oh, God. And it was just really awful all around. And I uh, said sayonara. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think that's an important thing that Lauren and I both work at is that you can say no. And that's that's something as actors we often feel disenfranchised with when we, for anyone who comes up against misogyny or sexual assault in these breakdowns or if you come up against racism and stereotypes, you can say no. And we feel this life of paucity where we, where we always have to be fighting for the next job. But if you can say no and tell them why you said no, you know, maybe we'll chip away at this. So they, all, they also replaced me with a skinny white lady. Oh, just to really turn the knife a little. To play what role again? This was Aldonza. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry that that happened, but delighted that you're here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in good news, Alex, you got, you went in for a role that really, I think we're crossing some boundaries now. Yeah, I think we're taking steps forward. Last week I was called in for a white supremacist. <laughs> Um, I don't think I should repeat them. Yet. <laughs> but, uh... Fair enough. Oh, it was easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but yeah. did you book it? <laughs> yeah. no. 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 Was there any moment at point they called you in and they were like, Alex J. Moreno, please <laughs> second. I was the last one in the room and she was complaining, like, for three people before me about how she'd been listening to people scream at her for, like, five hours straight. And uh, I came in. And she was like, so Alex, and I was like, yeah, what's up, man? Um, so just, you know, do what you want. <laughs> You're not booking this role. I, for one, think you would have been a wonderful Me white supremacist. <laughs> now, Annie, what's happened to you recently in the industry? Ooh, okay, so this is not a recent one, but I wanted to... Oh, that's right, it's not relatively recent, no, but I still I, want to hear I, it. I, I gave up that, that recent one for a different one. This was my first commercial gig. Yes. When I was just coming up and I was still non-union, and it was like right before I paid my union dues and went to the other side, and I'd um, gone in for this casting director a couple of times, and he knew me, and we were sort of friendly, so we were like, you know, we could banter. And I get there, and... There's a sheet that says, here's the line in English, you translate it in the language of the country of your origin. Oh. It's English. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but all right. So I'm like, I need the money, so okay. So I look and there's like Chinese, Haitian, Creole in parentheses, um, I don't know, Spanish, Puerto Rican. Oh. And I was like, Oh, so is the Puerto Rican different from the Spanish? Because I could do it like this. Do you want me to say like, hey, there goes that news van again? He's like, don't do that, Hannah, don't do that. The client's in there, don't, please don't do that. I was like, all right, because I thought that's what they wanted because I said like Puerto Rican and I'm from New York, so like, he's like, no, please just go in there and do that. So I go in and the line is, you all know it. Hey, there goes that news van again. <laughs> We've all seen it. <laughs> and so, I go in, I say the line because the language is English. And they're like, you know, 
maybe you could give it something. And I'm like, all right, I know what you want. So I start off with, wow, there was that notebook. story about school, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, post-graduating uh, Juilliard meetings for the industry, as you know, some of you guys may know, our institutions here hold these showcases, and they invite the industry to come over, like casting directors from ABC, NBC, or Sony, all over the place, managers, agents, and they basically showcase us. And then each one of them tallies us off and says, I want to meet with this person and that person, whoever. And I had the fortune of meeting up with some of these folks. This is what some of the meetings were like. This is one of them in New York City. <laughs> so, you're Latino, huh? <laughs> well, the industry isn't into Latinos anymore. The Latino phase is over. <laughs> the industry's into Indians now. But you could play Indian. Oh, oh you could play Hawaiian. I said, oh, well, well uh, when was the Latino phase? What was it about uh, five years ago when, uh, oh, that guy from your school. Uh, 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 there's only one of the Latino that I knew that made it out of there. That was Oscar Isaac. And I was like, Oscar Isaac? He said, guess him when he played Romeo in Romeo and Juliet. And I was like, well, that's cool. You see, the industry kind of picks and chooses what ethnicity it's into, kind of like what I imagine, like some dude, like big and skittles, like I'm into the yellow one now, and I'm into. And I was like, okay, cool. So I was bombarded with uh, after that, including her. So are you gonna change her na your name? Um, no, it's like not back in the day anymore. Oh well, Jimmy Schmitz did it, and so did Benjamin Brad, and and even Oscar Isaac did it. And I was like, well, I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. I think I'm just gonna stick to Jorge. And so that's, that's the same thing. So I, I took this information to Los Angeles, where I got to sit down with the president of casting at the time of Warner Brothers Television. And I said to Mr. Powers, I said, I don't mind dropping names. Um, I said, Mr. Powers, uh, do you see anyone like myself in your upcoming pilots? And without mentioning the word race, he throws his hands up in the air and he's like, look, Jorge, I know that we're not doing a good job at representing the people that you see out in the street. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, it's the producers, you see, the producers, they tell us that if we put more people that you see out in the street, we're not gonna make as much revenue. Mm. And then the first thing I thought was this white male intellectual who can't even use the term people of color. And he refers to us as people out in the street. <laughs> Two summers after that, Huffington Post comes out with an article that says that Latinos give the most money to Hollywood out of all the races. And so that debunks whatever theory those folks have up there. Uh, obviously, as we see things are changing now, I just, I imagine that it is gonna change. It's gonna be dependent on us, really. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I'm never gonna look at skills again <laughs> the same way. But no, it's true. And and it's gotta be so disheartening to go through that right out of school as well, where you're like, I'm gonna make it. You know, like oh, yeah. I'm going right into this industry, I wanna do important work, and, and you're basically no, being told. In other words, I, I couldn't play a Latino, this is the paradox, I couldn't play a thug or a gangster at all because uh, I would go in there like hardcore. I grew up with gangsters, I grew up with a couple of thugs, you know. And I've always wanted to actually play a gangster. And so I would go in there like all out, like seriously all out. And the, the, the casting director would be like, really good, but the, 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 your face, uh, you're not. Or they would call my agent and be like, hey, you're too cute to play the drug dealer. I live in Washington Heights. I know drug dealers that are better looking than I am. <laughs> I see him in the corner. <laughs> I hope when you write your one-man show, it'll be called Too Cute to Play It. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like the parents, like, I go in for this, but I can't make it because of this. Mm. 
And that you're trying, they're, you're being put into boxes yeah, in terms they want of, yeah. to look like Danny Trejo. Respected Danny Trejo because I love Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo's amazing. He's yeah. amazing. But they want all this, they think we all look like Danny. So right. Thank you for that. And then, Hor uh, Gilbert, to close us out, we have a story from you from a classic television yeah, show. Yeah, we do. We go back to 89, 90, uh, when the whole idea of diversity, they were just like rubbing the sticks together to get a spark for that. But, but, uh, it was the Cosby show, and it was the Huxtables that been, and I think, Silver Cup in Queens. And I was hired to play the uh, delivery boy dropping off the dry cleaning, uh, correction, the Puerto Rican delivery boy dropping off the dry cleaning. Right. And I was a guest artist or guest star, whatever. I was on for the whole week. They had a car pick me up, drive me back and forth. Yeah. So, <laughs> I didn't have to pay for parking. It was just great. Uh, so I get there, and um, uh, and it was the, the setup. It was done live, so the audience was come in. You would do one taping. You'd take a dinner break. You'd get notes from the director, who was Jay Sandridge. Jay Sandridge was the original director of the I Love Lucy episodes and many others throughout the years, Dick Van Dyke, very well-known director. Um, so the scene was, I'm, I forget my name, it was Jorge Raul Metaxo, I don't know what my name is. <laughs> but I drop off the dry cleaning, Rudy's there, Rudy was the youngest kid, high fiver. I drop off the dry cleaning on the kitchen table, and meanwhile, Mrs. Huxtable, Felicia Rashad, says, oh, uh, your money's on the stove. I go to the stove, I count it, she's $2.30 short. So I said, Mrs. Huxable, I'm sorry, you're a little short. And she goes, gee, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. And we tear the kitchen up looking for the thing. And we both got a lot of laughs, went very funny. Uh, the scene was over. Uh, the audience gets ushered out, and we have the dinner break. And Jay sandwiches when he gives notes. So uh, he went through some of them, and he says, Gilbert, very funny, very good, I like it. But, you know, um, make him more Puerto Rican. Oh. <laughs> so I stabbed him in the neck. <laughs> straw hat, a burro, and a machete strapped to my thigh. And they said, get out of here, are you crazy? Where the hell are we gonna get a straw hat? <laughs> so anyway, uh, the scene went fine. I, I never really changed it. Um, the only difference was I wish, they gave me like a newsboy cap to wear, and a, 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 a sort of constructive, a constructive piece of direction would have been, had he just said, just raise the hat, because when I finally watched it, it was covering my eyes and my, you couldn't see me and apparently it's still on YouTube. So, um, so that was the story with being a Puerto Rican. And uh, in terms of the Cosby show, I might have heard a couple of chuckles. No, I did not get the invite up to his dressing room <laughs> for, for a glass of red wine. Nice. It was well, white wine, but that's really good. Really well, on that delightful note, <laughs> thank you so much, you guys, for all your stories. Sabrina, do you have anything you want to say? No. Okay. <laughs> We scared you off a little too many and it <laughs> down to one. Well, we want to hear them afterwards upstairs. <laughs> now, let's find out what you men have in store for you. There are basically three options available to you. The first is the nuanced, coveted role of slow, fat sidekick. Latino man, a chubby mechanic who can do authentic snoring. Juan, Mexican, mentally slow. Overweight, Juan solicits Sean to perform sexual acts for money with him in the restroom of the fast food restaurant where they both work. Javier, Hispanic, walk slow, walk slow, pants slow. Jose, Mexican. He's not too bright, but he's a lovable character. He believes his chickens are responsible for his actions. And speaking of chickens, SAG after a Latino or Italian man to portray cockfight attendees should not be allergic nor afraid of real chickens. <laughs> but if stupid, heavy, and or chickens isn't the right fit for you, you too can rely on your natural sex appeal. Whether grouped in with other ethnicities or on your own, the market for the sexually dominant Latino seems to know no bounds. Heteronormativity is not necessarily required. Marco, gay boyfriend, Caribbean, bilingual English-Spanish, 
Hispanic, male attractive, will be playing a gay boyfriend, <laughs> Caribbean, can be Cuban, Dominican, Puerto Rican. Please note that the role of Marco is a gay boyfriend. Actors must be comfortable doing scenes that may entail two guys <laughs> tickling each other in bed and possibly like this. <laughs> See, that's what gay boyfriends do. <laughs> I should know, I have plenty of them. those ladies. Milo. Milo? Milo? Milo. Uh, pickup artist. Latin and smooth with the women. Pickup lines. Charm and seductive. Tight shirt and Euro style. Hot guy Mike. <laughs> Caucasian, Filipino, Hispanic, mixed ethnicity male. This guy refers to himself in third person. Enchanting. <laughs> Don't find enchanted. Jorge, Latino, well-built but elegant. Highly self-assured, the kind of guy who knows he's handsome and successful, but thankfully, doesn't make you feel too bad about it. <laughs> Noah, Caucasian, Eastern European, Hispanic male. Noah meets up weekly with a sex worker for a round of sex. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I say a round of sex? I meant a round of backgammon. <laughs> Great without a shirt. <laughs> Exotic portrait model. Very confident and narcissistic. Very sexual and free with his body. Bold and daring. Can overpower a woman. Yeah, you'll hear that one again in my sexual assault show. <laughs> <coughs> Quantity Soriano. <laughs> Is Latino preferred but not required. <laughs> Cocky, great looking body is that of a god. <laughs> Will rock the world of Jamie and be accused of being a villain in the process smoking. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, villains. This bafflingly constructed sentence segues us perfectly into the be all and end all of Latino roles the criminal. Uh, lead Latin male, must speak fluent Spanish, abandoned by his mother after his drug lord father's incarceration uh, cap was raised by his father's mother between California and Mexico. <laughs> Fighting to keep him out of the family business was her goal. But luckily for this pint-sized Roman Catholic, Jesus already died for the sins her grandson would soon commit to rise to drug infamy. <laughs> reserved solely for the men. Hood rat number one. <laughs> Hispanic female can do Latina accent. Someone who would be at a drug dealer's house, tough exterior, but still sex. <laughs> Sister of Jill? <laughs> Caucasian or Dominican, Latina, you can speak Spanish? <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Portraying a drug cartel. <laughs> you knew women could multitask, but you never saw the one woman drug cartel coming. It's like Black Mirror, maybe? <laughs> Catherine Zeta Jones will be playing. <laughs> Union, African American and Hispanic men and women to portray junkies. Yay! <laughs> Someone should take whoever determined the ethnicity of these characters to the hotbed of American opiate addiction, white suburbia. Yeah. Even among criminals, you'll have to establish your niche within the category. There are the high status leaders and lords. Colombian drug no. <laughs> 
sinister. Early. Can have facial hair or be clean shaven, but must be scary and have strong presence. No, this is a Colombian drug lord. <laughs> Drug mules. El cabuz. <laughs> El cabuz is Manny's father and a legendary drug smuggler. His particular skill involves hiding product inside of himself. <laughs> Illegal immigrant. He may get intense about certain issues. <laughs> yeah, I would too if my ass were packed with heroin. <laughs> or as Sabrina said in rehearsal today, you must have IBS. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, you will be asked to play against type. Alejandro Gomez, Hispanic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No, not okay. It's okay. okay. Alejandro Gomez, Hispanic, a former member of the Mombasa Cartel. Must be able to sit very still and wear contacts. Both at the same time? I am out. Occasionally, this is where that line comes, you will be asked to play against type. Two older desperados, sleazy Mexicans, not gangbangers. But for the most part, this is what your options look like as a Latino in the industry. Hector, Hispanic male, must look like a gang member, covered in tattoos, piercings okay, tough exterior, doesn't take shit from anyone. Mexican gangster, Hispanic male, Mexican gang member, tough exterior, doesn't take shit from anyone. Tattoos and piercings encouraged, must have Mexican authentic accent. Thug number one. Hispanic, gangster look, street wise, we talk the talk and walk the walk. Que pasa ese? <laughs> Lots of testosterone. Plenty of attitude. Rico, Rico. Hispanic Latino. Hot headed thug. An amateur porn actor. A true cholo. <laughs> Rico has no boundaries and usually gets what he wants. Please, mention if you have any visible tattoos. <laughs> Male. Why would you mention it if they're visible? <laughs> <laughs> it's visible now. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Male thug, gang kid. Black or Hispanic male, tattoos are great. Rough around the edges, tough. Dressed in typical gang wear. T-shirt, baggy dickies, Cortezes, or as I like to call them, G-Nikes, or black bands or chucks. Cool gang guy, great actor, looking for the real deal. Oscar, Hispanic male. Mean, intense looking, muscular, not fat. Must have sleeve tattoos. Looking for someone with real gang affiliation. to a person when the same words are written about them over and over? What happens to a culture when the same images are shown to it over and over? What happens to humanity when words and images are weaponized over and over? The result is the building of walls. So, let's break down some walls. As mentioned at the top of the show, what the cast will now perform are pieces written in direct response to the collection of breakdowns you just heard. They could be anything, songs, scenes, poetry, monologues, whatever they were inspired to write. The only exception to this structure is the first piece we'll hear by Alex Beach. Is Alex here right? No. Alex originally wrote this as a Facebook post, but when I read it, I knew we had to include it in tonight's show. So, here is my imaginary conversation with Ava Perón by Alex Beach. About me? Yes. What, an entire musical? Oh, it's a classic. Some would call it a saga, an opera, an epic. Like my life. Like your life. It was written by a British man. 
He's very famous and successful. One of the few writers who have made riches from writing musicals. He made riches from my story. So did you. Yes, touche, but true. <laughs> you should see the actors who play you. Even an American pop icon, an Italian-American who took voice lessons. It's quite a role. Well, it's perfect that I, sh I should be played by an Italian-American. Most Argentinians are Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The indigenous population sort of disappeared, didn't it? Hmm. <laughs> It became a controversy. Who should play you? One theater is in trouble because they didn't cast the Latinx. What is that? I don't know. I don't know. A Latin American, a descendant of Latin Americans. They understand our internal psychological world, the struggle of Latin Americans, our cultures, religions. My mother says every head is a world. Did they complain that the musical is written by a British man? No. It is the director, what's the word? Latinx or Latinx. What is the plural of that in Spanish? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> anyway, no, the director's not. Well, did they complain that the director isn't Latin Latinx? <laughs> no. Are musicals written by the Latinx popular in New York? <laughs> Only one writer is, is very famous. His musicals are produced everywhere. Only one? Yes. What? And then any by women? No. Uh, but a woman helped him write one of his. And of course there are protests and boycotts because musicals by Latin Sings aren't produced by the Americans. No. There are no protests or boycotts. I don't understand Americans. <laughs> Me neither. Tell me more about this pop icon who played me. End of scene. <laughs> Next we have For the Love of Natalie Wood by, did I skip pages? No, For the Love of Natalie Wood by Matt Barbeau. <laughs> Setting, a street corner, a folding table set up with folding chairs. Maybe there are a few beers on the table. Sam and Herbie are in the middle of a game of dominoes. <laughs> The first Puerto Rican girl I ever fell in love with was Natalie Wood. <laughs> you ain't Maria, not Natalie Wood. Same person. The character Maria is Puerto Rican. Natalie Wood, who played her, is not. Same person. Whatever. <laughs> I loved her. The first Puerto Rican girl I ever fell in love with was Griselda Loredo who lived up the block from me when I was 10. I was, I was 10 when I first met, or saw Natalie Wood. Griselda was 28. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, she was my babysitter, and I loved her. She was what you might call voluptuous, but all I knew was I liked it when she hugged me. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. Natalie Wood had the voice of an angel. Uh, Natalie Wood didn't win the Oscar. Rita Moreno won the Oscar. Rita Moreno was really Puerto Rican. Rita Moreno looked too much like my mom and my cousins. <laughs> yeah. Your mom really was a looker back in the day. Gross. But Natalie Wood was as pretty as any other Hollywood star. Oh, that's because none of the other Hollywood stars were Puerto Rican either. <laughs> what she sang. I feel pretty. I wanted to be her Tony. You could never be her Tony. Why not? Because you're Puerto Rican. <laughs> so? Don't be racist. Yeah, there are Puerto Rican characters in that movie, and Tony is Polish. Stop limiting, limiting me. I can do it. Uh, what's that uh, terrible joke? Uh, Maria, Maria, Maria. What's the only kind of wood that doesn't float? Oh. I find that callous. And offensive. <laughs> they never cast you. You look more like Bernardo than Tony. The guy who played Bernardo was Greek. See? A Puerto Rican guy could never play the Polish guy because they don't even let Puerto Rican guys play Puerto Ricans. I like Hamilton better. <laughs> Next 
we have Busty Gabriella Speaks by Brian Eugenio Herrera. <laughs> Anna just got out of bed. It might be morning. She's dressed for a comfortable sleep, loose pajama pants, and a stretched out t-shirt with the words, Busty Gabriela, printed in once bold tied across the bosom. Anna checks her phone. She scrolls briskly through an accumulation of messages, occasionally pausing to sigh or suck her teeth. Haven't I read for this part before? Like 100 times. When I started up, it was all sassy, saucy, sucias. Oh, Ellen. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. You see, you see, when I was starting out, I heard Rita Moreno talking on a show like yours about how it was for her way back before West Side Story. Rita said she was always cast as the sassy, sexy, sultry maiden from the South Seas or the South Asia or South America or the South Side. And Rita said parts were vague and generic and stupid, so she used the same vague and generic and stupid accent for all of them. Watch your old stuff sometime, you'll see. I heard that and I decided to be like Rita. I even gave my girls names. There was Spicy. I'm spicy, I gossip and I chew gum. I'm sassy and I just drip with a lot in flavor. Taste me, I dares you. <laughs> There was homie. I'm homie. I'm tough enough to stand my ground, but vulnerable enough to wound easily. I'm desperate for another life, the life that I should have had. Instead, I'm background in yet another drug dealer's apartment. What are you looking at? And there was Ophelia Fifi Firecracker. I'm Fifi Firecracker. I'm gorgeous. I'm overbearing. I'm controlling. My Those girls got me some terrible jobs. <laughs> I miss them sometimes, but none of them had anything to do with me getting the best, worst job I ever got. Busty Gabriela. Yes, America, that watches Ellen. This vision you see before you was once Busty Gabriela. That, this was back in my spicy homie firecracker days, so like 20 years ago. Shit, I'm getting old. My representation at the time was Oh, like, it's going to be huge. Speed too huge. Major franchise potential. Rudy's the sidekick and they want you for Rudy's girlfriend. So uh, we went in, spicy homie and Fifi and me. But they didn't read any of us. Just asked me a couple of nothing questions on camera. And before I even got home, they called to say I booked it. A week or so later, I showed up for my two days call sheet listing me as Rudy's girlfriend. My own trailer, my own wardrobe assistant, six outfits, six setups, big time. Two long days of me as Rudy's girlfriend laughing over fake Chardonnay, disco dancing, listening in front of a fireplace, shrieking as Rudy broke up a fist fight. Standard big 90s montage shit, but it was going to be my big budget big 90s shit. <laughs> so they had me back in for some disco dancing reshoots on what turned out to be rap day. And the main AD was giving everyone these rolled up t-shirts with their job titles or character names on them. He comes up to me and I was all, oh, you got a Rudy's girlfriend t-shirt. He winked all big and said, something much better. I unrolled the shirt he gave me this very shirt, Busty Gabriela. That's what the guys in post started calling you, he said. And that's how you'll be listed in the credits. Much better than Rudy's girlfriend, don't you think? But my name is Anna. Oh, yeah, I was like, good shoot, Busty Gabriela. And I was all, dude, I'd really rather have the 10 bucks it costs you to have this made. Collector's item, babe, when this movie hits, sell it on eBay, make your fortune. Wish I could remember that pendejo AD's name so I could look him up on Facebook, at least see whether he's a studio vice president or selling real estate in, in Altadena. <laughs> because that movie did not hit. My big 90s breakout gig ended up one of those no-name movies they sell at the dollar store because they decided to release it as a romantic thriller and not a buddy pick. There's no Rudy, so there's no Rudy's girlfriend. <laughs> but Busty Gabriela survived. 
as the star, I guess, of a 15, 20 second disco dancing montage. It's just me, or Busty Gabriela, I guess, shooting sexy looks originally aimed at Rudy and now recut to land on the white dude hero. But um, just check my IMDB page if you want proof, but don't do internet searches for Busty Gabriela. Trust me on that. <laughs> so yeah, Ellen, I've been around the block, been there, done that, got the shirt, literally. <laughs> which is why it's so great to be here promoting a film that means so much to me. A film which will not be casting today. Ugh, my mouth feels disgusting. Did I brush my teeth? End of scene. <laughs> next we have Mexican Chicks Who Can Write Are So Hot Right Now by Hilary Bettis. <laughs> Interior, Hollywood Exec's office, day. Hillary sips her complimentary water while waiting for the Hollywood exec bro who's running late. They're always running late. Mm -hmm. Hollywood exec bro saunters in. Hey, sorry to keep you waiting. Bradley Cooper just called and was like, bro Seth, let's do drinks. <laughs> cool. So I read your play, The Ghost of... Uh... Hillary sips her water. How do you pronounce it? The Ghost of Lottie Bravo. Yeah, The Ghost of La La Land. It's good. What were you uh, <laughs> for? I uh, wanted an American audience to live in the poverty created by our maquila system on the border, uh, so they might have more compassion for undocumented immigrants and their struggle to hum humanize their existence in the face of American indifference and xenophobia. Cool. Your agent says you're Mexican. <laughs> I'm mixed. Nice. Yeah. I was born and raised here. Um, Mexican chicks that can write are so hot right now. Good optics. Glad I found my niche. We're trying to tap the Latino market. Everyone wants in and no one can seem to figure it out. Well, I, I have some thoughts about so it. So we have this project, but nothing out there like it. I mean, what you to develop it. Hillary pretends like she's interested. Please don't let this be another cartel show. Please don't let this be another cartel show. So this Mexican cartel family? <laughs> they're, well, they're tough and then ruthless. They're branching out to get this guns. You know, a lot of violence and explosions. But the heart of the family is Rosa, Maria, Annabella, Chiquita, Banana. A strong, sassy female with a nice ass who ends up being tougher than all the men. And get this, she has a tag. Dia de los Muertos came early this year. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I remember branding and shit. Mugs, t shirts. We want you to write this on spec, of course. So original. Right? <laughs> I have a crazy thought. Sure. So, I know it's crazy, mm -hmm. but the majority of people from Latin America, including Mexico, aren't in cartels. So again, and I, I know this is insane, but if you want to appeal to the Latinx market, maybe make a show about regular people that just happen to be Mexicans, like Friends, or Seinfeld, or Dawson's <laughs> Creek, or Girls, or Friday Night Lights, or Sex in the City, or Six Feet Under. Yeah, those are all great shows, but Mexicans want to see themselves on TV. <laughs> Hillary blinks. Sure. Yeah, sh sure, sure. Uh, cartel thugs and sassy mates. Exactly. Cool. 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 Huh. So, I'll send that stuff over to your reps. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Hollywood exec bro checks his watch even though there's a giant clock on the wall. Shit, I, I gotta go. I uh, don't want to keep the coop waiting. Uh, he hates that. My assistant will show you out. Oh, and uh, we validate. Hollywood exec bro leaves. Hillary bangs her head against the table until blood oozes from her ears. <laughs> and then she slowly rises, wiping the blood from her face, rage in her eyes. Hillary pulls out a sword, then runs out of the office. We hear screams, the sound of hacking bodies. No! Ah, tell the coop, Joseph, I love you. He gurgles blood, then dies. Hillary walks back into the office, holding the Hollywood exec bro's severed head. Dia de los Muertos came early this year, motherfucker. the table, then calls her agent. Hey, my meeting with Netflix went really well. <laughs> oh, can you let Harvey Weinstein? I know that I'm stuck in traffic, but I am on my way. <laughs> Hillary wipes the blood from her sword with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Latina 2.0 by Christina Nieves. 
A group of white network television executives all sit in a conference room. A Latina executive is standing at the front of the room, wrapping up her presentation. Each of you will find in your packets a copy of the latest Nielsen report, Latina 2.0. Fiscally conscious, conservative, a culturally influential, and familia forward. The report shows that the growth of US Latinas is outpacing that of every other demographic in social media, cultural affinity, and trend setting in the areas of community, beauty, and style. The numbers tell a very exciting story. There are an estimated 38 million American Latinas with an average age of 31. In the last decade, this population has grown by 37% now comprising 17% of the nation's total female population. These women are educated. 25% have bachelor's degrees. These women are business owners with 1.5 million Latino-owned businesses in the US, accounting for $78.7 .7 billion in revenue. These women are connected. The report found that Latinas are significantly more likely than white women to use social networking sites, are also more likely to own smartphones, and to watch videos, listen to podcasts, and purchase music on their phones. These women are the decision makers of their households, deciding what brands are purchased, what TV shows the family is watching, and what movies they will buy tickets for. The American Latino population is the seventh largest GDP in the world at $2.13 trillion. And Latinas are our way in. So, what you're saying is, it would be in our best interest to start creating more programming geared toward and featuring Latinas, considering they are the fastest growing demographic in our country and stand to make us billions of dollars if only we were smart enough to acknowledge their existence? Yes! <laughs> oh, you are hilarious. <laughs> Making TV shows for Hispanics? That's who, what network do you think this is? Telemundo? <laughs> Tomorrow I want an update on the untitled generic white show we're developing about the generic white people generically being white. <laughs> End of scene. Next up we have Dora the Explorer, a comeback tale by Nancy Garcia Loza. Hi. <laughs> Me llamo Dora, huh? We met in 2000, remember? It was the adventurous uh, seven-year-old kid with a hit television series. Ring a bell? No? Okay, okay, I know you all remember. I'm the Mexican-American girl with the bangs. The show that surpassed Blue's Clues on Nickelodeon. No? Nah? Like, come on, I used to explore a ton of places with my purple backpack. <laughs> come on, you guys remember my anthropomorphic monkey, the little guy named Boots? Oh. <laughs> See, it's me, Dora. I know, here I am, all grown up. 25 now, believe me, it's hard out there. Being a working Mexican-American former child star and animated cartoon. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was super blessed. It was a great 14-year run. But I think I'm ready, you know, for my comeback. I've had some time these last few years to center myself. I got serious. to classes at Stella Adler y todo. <laughs> so here I am. Ready to dust off my purple backpack and get back into the thick of it. Ready to work. But damn, let me tell you, this shit is not easy. Not that fácil. Last week, I told my agent, I want something that lets people see the grown-up Dora. A breakout role, complicated, rich, with dimension. So my agent, Tracy, nodded real hard like this. She kept saying, yeah, 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 totally, totally. <laughs> I'm on it. I am not going to let this business typecast you. <laughs> I've got you, Dora. <laughs> I stand up, she gets on the phone, and just as I'm about to leave, she 
She whispers with a wagging finger. Dora, Dora, no donuts today. I know you like that little place around the corner. You like the emails. <laughs> well, it's just the meat goes right to the tail. <laughs> so straight to spin glass, um, if you know what I mean. <laughs> she winks at me, <laughs> buttons it with, oh, I'm only looking out for you. Love you. <laughs> she plunges back into her phone, and I don't get a word in or never. My head is swirling by the time I'm passing the donut shop. Stop in the window, examine my reflection, my size. Before I even finish thinking, she's already calling me. And I mean, I'm super excited. She's like, Dora, hang up right now, read my email, and call me back because I found exactly what you want. <laughs> I let myself get a little excited. Talk about range. Went from wanting to eat my feelings to my agent is the best. <laughs> maybe this shit isn't so bad, right? And maybe my agent is just looking out for me. So I pull up the email while I sing, Dora's gonna get her life back on door. Okay, Leticia, 18 to 25 years old. Great, check. That's my abuelita's name, and I'm 25, so check and check. I continue reading. Hispanic female. Okay, you know what? Kind of sounds like you're afraid of saying Latinx, but I'll keep reading and then it's like you're referring to me by a derivative of my like, colonizer. <laughs> Mexican immigrant, hoping to build a new life in America. Innocent and trusting, but soulful, strong, emotional range. I process. I'm gonna give him a point for not saying illegal immigrant because people aren't illegal, y'all. Uh, but aren't there stories about the 36 million Mexican Americans that already live here? Strong emotional range, okay, maybe that's something I can latch on to. Uh, I know better. I read the last part and freeze for many reasons. When suggestive rape scene. No nudity. Only shoulders and above. I just want to eat my feelings at this point. This is what I'm getting called in for, me, Hindi? Dora, you're smart, adventurous, fearless, accomplished, Mexican-American child star. Did I call my agent back? Yes. Did I say, hell no, yes. She tried to save it. Well, what about musical theater? I know you've been singing Guthrie tunes in the village. First, I'm singing Flaco Jimenez, Jimenez and Freddy Fetter, not Guthrie. <clears throat> My agent continues, West Side Story's coming back. It could be big, you know. Want me to make some calls? And y'all, I just want West Side Story to go away already. <laughs> I mean, we got writers. Thanks, but no thanks. And as I eat half my donut and decide to throw away the rest and Keep pushing back tomorrow. What do I see in the trash can? In a big ass bold headline. Catherine Zeta Jones's daughter to star as lead in Paramount's Dora the Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? My abuela Tommy. Sigue la junta andando. So, aquí les va esta aurora from Dora la Explorer. Explorador. <laughs> this land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island. From the redwood forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land includes you and me. This land includes you and me. And me. And me and 36 million Mexican-Americans. Ahua! End of scene. <laughs> Next up we have The Hair with Accent by Diana Rubano. Gabriela, projected. No, <laughs> that's not. <laughs> Gabriela, female, late 20, er, Right. 30, <laughs> early 30s, any ethnicity, beautiful, sexy, busty. She is referred to as Busty Gabriela. Spanish accent, a plus. Okay, I'm ready. Hey, Rico, please come back, baby. I love you. Oh, yes, sorry. You want an accent? Sorry. Oh, Rico, y'all, please come. 
Rico, Rico, I'll never be hungry again. <laughs> yes, that's my real accent. I'm, okay, I don't really know what you mean. Can you demonstrate? <laughs> oh, uh, oh my gosh, sorry. Yeah, I think I have it now. Rico! I love you. Better? Great, thanks. Translate it? On the fly? Yeah. Uh. Hey, Rico, reviens, bébé, je t'aime. Ya, Rico, Arjuk, er ya, baby, bahad back. Hey, Rico. Ching hui la bao be, wa ai ni? Huh? Oh, yeah, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> End of scene. <laughs> Next we have The Room Where It Happens by Guadalupe del Carmen. <laughs> Estela, a black Latina, enters the audition room and greets the white casting director. Hello, my name is. Oh, we're seeing African American actors tomorrow. Today it's Latinos. Next! I, uh, yes, I know. I'm Latina. Well, you don't look it. Uh, are you sure? <laughs> I'm pretty sure of my ethnicity. Okay, uh, let's get this over with. Uh, I have somewhere to be. Now, this uh, character is very sweet and concerned mother. She only wants the best for her kids. Can you do that? Yeah, uh, yeah sure can. Mm -hmm. Pero mijo, I only want the best for you. I, I don't want you hanging with those boys. They're trouble. You will be a great janitor like your father someday. Great, thank you. Uh, let's try it a little more spicy. Let's try that. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> um, pero mijo, I only want the best for you. I don't want you hanging with those boys, they're trouble. Uh, you will be a great janitor like your father someday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. Uh, that was great. Uh, but let's try a little spicier, you know, with a dash of accent. Oh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, pero mijo, I only want the best for you. I don't want you hanging with us boys. They're trouble. You will be a great janitor like your father someday. Great. Yeah. Uh, last time, I promise. We don't have all day, right? Huh? Can you give me the spice level from the first one with a very thick accent? Oh, sure. Um. <clears throat> Pero mijo! for the role of Lakeisha, uh, and if you can give me street with a sprinkle of spice and a touch of an accent, that would be phenomenal. Uh, kind of like Rosie Perez and White Men Can't Jump. Feel free to, you know, stop and you know, use your arms, you know, throw in some Spanish words. We really don't know what we're doing. Okay, you got it. First and foremost, to my director, Jen Holtman, to videographer, Tim Matson, to photographer, Howard Sherman, Mark White, to the New Orleans Theater, for giving us home for the first iteration of the show, Mary Kate Mangum up in the booth, Ramon Tejada, Arsenio Santos for the cast of graphic design, Alex Chester, Chris Peterson, on stage block time, on Broadway World, the whole staff here at Joe's Pub, please tip your servers well, and my parents, of course, here in the front row. <laughs> and all of our incredible writers tonight. show will go to the Latinx Theater Commons or LTC. LTC in partnership with HowlRound is a national
national movement that uses a commons-based approach to transform the narrative of the American theater, to amplify the visibility of Latinx performance making, and to champion equity through advocacy, art making, convening, and scholarship. Check them out online at howlround.com slash latinx dash theater dash commons. Now, without further ado, to close us out, here is Spanish Harlem Honey from the Bronx in the Hood, an amended meditation by Miguelia Curry. <laughs> Spanish Harlem Honey Production Company Siki. Rosita, Rosita Anita, Bobita, Chiquita. Crime fighting sisters from the hood could be 18 to 60. Hispanic, <laughs> Latinas, Latinx mamitas. Must be able to pass as Caucasian, but secretly a black or Asian persuasion. This is the white fantasy casting call. Y'all may work as a maid, nanny, or cook during the day but at night walks the streets whoring and fighting her way. <laughs> Must listen to Latin music looking like a telenovela cutie. Must be topless and slash or bottomless with a bountiful booty. Uh, Must wear leopard prints while reciting the rosary in Spanish. <laughs> Bunka donka donking away. Love watching the back door vanish. Your mantra, big bum, big breasts, big heart, wet clam. Mucho caliente, muy caliente, very spicy, hot dang! Must be comfortable in lingerie, a bikini and a red pencil skirt. Or a white leather apron and a see-through shirt. Like the horny next door mother you have fucked. Mother you'd like to suck, mother you'd never dare pluck. Scary shit kicking mother but like no other lover. Special skills, kegel exercise queens with Pilates coached core. Can bend at the waist so double D's touch the floor. Prefer hood kitten, must purr on cue. Must wear a bunny suit, promise not to sue. Think Harvard-educated whore from the hood with ghetto accent who's barely understood. Former lingerie model with a deep camel toe turned church lady crime-fighting thigh-slapping hoe. Possibly drag queen with ribs removed. Thin diva with implants improved. Dirty, 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 dirty not clean, God-fearing, burning hot. Match, match, set her on fire. Witch, bitch, pussy for hire. This savage melts around men twice her age. He has a big gun and keys to her cage. If funny, she can weigh up to a ton. Supporting roles, every last one. Thank you so much for